Hey Kellogg. Good morning everybody. Aja here from Garden Days. We are at the University of Tennessee Gardens. It's a beautiful day today, so we thought we'd take a walk around and see what was in bloom or just what's growing. I love how they turned this bistro set into planters. They've got drought tolerant, obviously. There's sedum here, chicks and hens, and then more sedum. So this is the courtyard that you first come into when arriving at the gardens. We've been finding a lot of free, wonderful, wonderful gardens to visit. And this is one as well. Planting around pad. I guess they had a big AC unit here and this is their way of disguising it. Did a good job. So the daffodils are in bloom. I love this variety. The flower is so pretty. Look at that. Nice. We have some tulips in bloom. They almost look fake. That's gorgeous right there. So they have a rain garden here. And I guess this is the runoff from the building, just kind of irrigates this sector here. Just looks like the irises. And they have a rooftop garden as well. It's pretty cool. This path leads to the South Greenhouse. Huh? Interesting landscaping. Yeah. Don't know what's going on with that. Huh? It looks like some things are just now starting to come up. And leaf out as well. A tribute to Africa. That's a nice column. It's like it's made from marble. They have some hookera or corbel. A Japanese maple. There's the greenhouse over there. And it looks like they have some annuals mixed in with some rosemary. So this garden that we're looking at is the Education and Horticultural Therapy Program Garden. And there's some information. Put together for kids, summer camp kids and school field trips. Too. Look at all the pansies. I like the purple and yellow mix. More pansies here. Oh, look at it. They have some cabbage growing. Are there? <laughs> wow, that's not very deep, that trough. Yeah, I see. Oh, it's a blueberry plant. I just noticed the flowers. Then they have a lavender on the side of it. They even have <laughs> flowers growing out of a trash can, an old metal trash can. I don't believe they actually allow you to go into the greenhouse. Wow, that is a lot of daffodils. They go all the way back there, but they're done blooming, at least this patch is. I've said this before, I love white flowers. And look at this daffodil. It's all white. It's kind of more of an off-white. That's beautiful. I love this row of evergreens through here, especially right here. Oh, I don't know what that is, but that is a beautiful pine. Wow, that is so interesting. Oh, I love that. It has just big ball clusters of pine needles. We're now getting ready to go into the rock garden. Seems like they have thornless, I think, blackberries along this fence. Wow, yeah, this is a better look at all the evergreens growing. This is another interesting one here. And I even love the color on this plant. It's kind of got a golden look to it, but the end, it's like a light burgundy. Yeah, very nicely done. And they have some creeping phlox here. Cool. Oh, they're under renovation. That's so unfortunate. The kitchen garden. Oh, all, kitchen garden. All edibles. So unfortunately, this is closed down, but they're renovating a kitchen garden here. Look at these blooms. Wow. That is a beautiful flower. 
I see some mullein tucked in there. Okay, and what is this? Aster. They don't have a lot of plant tags. Oh, they even have a cactus growing here. Looks like a prickly pear. So they have more aromatic asters, but they are not in bloom. Wow, this is nice through here. I like the rock garden. What is this? Strawberry seduction, oh, yarrow. They have some grasses interplanted. I wonder what that flower is back there. Just a lone pink flower, it's beautiful. Oh, I like the mullein in the planter with the sedum. This is, looks like a mungo pine, kind of low growing. Kind of reminds me of Arizona with the plantings in here. I oh, know, look at that. They had a lone flower back there too. It's like crocus or something. Yeah. I have this plant back at home a friend gave me and I planted it in a planter. It's doing pretty well. I forget the, oh here, it's right here. Oh, that's right, the ice plant. Kellogg, there's no lizards. We're not back at home. <laughs> Anyways, that is very beautiful. I almost didn't notice this apple. I think it's an apple. That's a spalliade. How beautiful. Huh. I like that how they have it along the garden fence. I might have to try that. Just want to give you an overview. We came from over that way and we're going to go around and look at these gardens. I'm going to think come back around to that side. New perennial movement. So a lot of gardens are starting to use perennials. They're just true and tested and they come back year after year. Although they don't bloom like annuals. So we're talking about this style uses huge number of perennials densely planted and the effect is stunning. I agree with that. It is very pretty when you can get huge patches of things growing. I love a nice drift of flowers. Since this is a university, I'm sure there are test gardens. Not sure what this is. It looks familiar. Hmm, let's see, there are different names. Cor wait, what's that? Cordon Bleu. Um, hmm. I'm sure someone out there will know. Yeah, but none of this is starting to leaf out or blooming yet. Oh, wow. So I am kind of look like lamb's ear. Oh, it is lamb's ear. Okay. I was thinking that was a forsythia, but I don't think so. No, the structure doesn't look like it. That looks like a huge, what is that? It's not time, is it? Oh, it is. Cool. Tell by the smell. Look at that old beat up truck. There's even a gas pump on the other side. I bet that would look really cool planted out. Thank you. Good girl, Mama. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> Thank you. So Jeff's just pointing out these uh, little bee boxes. Some species are soft. Yeah. I've heard that before. Some bee species are solitary and do not live in large families. Like bumblebees. Right, exactly. Or carpenter bees. Wow, look at how this sector has been planted out. So pretty. Up front they have iris and stone crop. And what is back there? The Norway spruce. Yeah, I love this sector right here. Very nicely done. Like the red bud. Then there is the Niagara Falls Eastern White Pine. It's low growing. That is absolutely beautiful. Looks like some not sure if those are daylilies. It's like um, barberries in the back. And there's a boxwood there. That one is the borderline Japanese boxwood. We have a maple here, which is, um, 
Oh, I can't read it. Something cream, Japanese maple. Okay. Oh, wow, look at that tree in bloom. So this is a dogwood. I guess I was mistaken. I was thinking a lot of these like flowering trees were the dogwoods, but I think those were Bradford pears because the dogwood has a totally different flower. Look at that. This is a dogwood flower. This is a deodor cedar. Wow, that gets huge. I have one planted right there by the, um, by the shipping container and the deck and but it has a it's a, a different color it's not this green color it's more of a, a paler green oh my god that thing's gonna get massive right there i might should move that before it gets too big they have the crimson kate azalea here you can see it looks like it had some kind of yeah frost damage hmm you can see one that hasn't been frost damaged the Leaves are nice and green, and that's a beautiful flower. So they have the blue lobelia that's just starting to come up. Bee balm, it's not there. Huh. Butterfly bush that's been cut back. It is spring, but not everything is in bloom. I love this maple, but it looks like half of it died. I almost missed this. There's actually more growing here or starting to come up. We've got the Mexican feather grass. And then we have the bearded tongue. I think that's a penstemon. Oh, it is a penstemon. Okay. American beauty berry that's cut back and not growing yet. Then the big blue stem, red October. Here they have sea holly here and more aromatic aster. Nothing growing right here yet, but it is wild sweet William. Another dogwood blooming. I love this sundial right here. Oh, look at the bloom on this tulip. It's huge and beautiful. Like the jasmine vine here. Oh, look at they have the Arizona milkweed. That uh, it's just starting to peek out. I really love this display. Oh, I just noticed the pink tulips there. More corbels. I love that color. Oh, look at that interesting sculpture there. I like hardscape like that. Well, I just noticed these pretty flowers over here. I think that's a snowball viburnum. We've got a Japanese maple, a yew, and then a red bud. Oh, it looks like there's barberry down here. I think that's Japanese barberry, yeah. I have one of those planted back at home. Doesn't look like much is growing on this way, but I'll still show it. Um, we're gonna go on this side of the pond that they have here. It's a nice feature. Well, that pond looks a bit low. And then we're getting back on the pavement. It's pretty through here. Another Japanese maple, look how dainty the leaves are. Wow, looks so airy. Another maple there. Got the oak leaf hydrangea, some hosta. Ooh, that's a pretty one. I like the shiny leaves on that. Look at that beautiful patch of summer snowflake London lily. Got some hellebore here. It's just now starting to come up. They have the blue blush hosta. This sector is nicely done. So they have another bed of hosta, but not much growing. There is the propeller trillium growing. That's a beautiful plant. I think that's what I had seen before as that nice burgundy kind of flower that comes up. The PD gold flash hosta is just now starting to come up. See the leaves there. More summer snowflakes. So pretty, look at how dainty those flowers are. It's like little bells, ding, 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 ding. The viburnum in full glorious bloom. Not much here. A few ferns. And I think that's lily grass. I'm sure 
sure this hosta garden is beautiful once everything is up and growing. We came to this walking path out on the edge because look what Jeff found. This is the Chinese snowball. That must be old. It is completely huge. Wow. Let's get a closer look. Look at these blooms. Just tons of clusters of flowers just everywhere. I'm surprised this isn't covered with pollinators or bees or whatever. Oh my God, the flowers are so soft. That is just absolutely gorgeous. And here's a panning view of the rest of the garden. Daffodils. Yeah, it definitely reminds me, a lot of these gardens are reminding me of a Japanese garden with all the evergreens and stuff. That is the largest hydrangea I've ever seen, ever. More hellebore, nahasta. This is nicely done through here. Oh yeah, this is very pretty. Doesn't look kind of barren. The lungwort is in bloom, isn't this a pretty plant? So I just looked these up and it said that the, it was the American alum root, but the sign says corabel. And I was like, that does not look like a corabel or a hookera. Look at that. Huh. Very pretty plant though. Ooh, this fall cypress has seen better days. I think, yeah, I think it got a bit of winter damage. It's next to this nice, lovely red bud which is starting to leaf out now. Other than the main structures of this plant, there's a lot of hostas which are just now starting to come up. Wow, that's a huge mugo pine. So there's a plaque over there. We're just walking saying this is a national hosta garden. That's why there's so many hostas in here. Too bad we're here at the wrong time for that. Look, Kellogg, this could be you. <laughs> the little um, robin on his back. I like this boardwalk they have here. Seems like the water lilies are just starting to come up and they have duckweed in here. A lot of it. Well, not, I've seen worse, but this side has got more. Okay, that's a short boardwalk. When we were in Florida, spring had definitely sprung and things were growing and flowering and also in South Carolina because it was a little warmer. It is definitely colder here in Tennessee, so things are just now starting to come up. Okay, we're going to take a walk through here. And that's pretty. Is that a red bed? looks very pale, but I guess it is. Oh, more hellebores here and in the center by this tree stump. I like that when there's like an old tree stump. They got some daffodils and tulips. We'll take a look at that on our way out. turn here. See how dark those red buds are? There's a dry creek here. There's a path that goes this way. Oh, how beautiful is this? Oh wow, look at on the outer edge, that flowering bush, huh? Oh yeah, it is. Isn't that pretty? It looks like an azalea flower. That is an azalea, but, but it has dark burgundy leaves. Seems like that path was a dead end. So we're gonna come around this way. Laura Pedalum, also known as the Chinese fringe flower. The darker purple red buds are actually Oklahoma and Texas red buds. 
Well, this is a really beautiful sitting area right here. There's a lower pedalum that I couldn't remember. There's a huge one on the other side of this red bud. And some white daffodils, how pretty. And this is a limelight pinnacle hydrangea starting to leaf out with its old spent blooms. There's that lower pedalum. I didn't know they got that big. It's beautiful. Got nice airy flowers. How'd I miss this? Look at this patch of bluebells. And it has a dark maroon hellebore next to it. More beautiful daffodils. Oh, and a Japanese maple here. What is, oh, it's just the daffodil. We're going over to this. I wanted to see what this red flowered bush is or shrub. Oh, wow. I would love one of these in my gardens. It's a flowering quince. So beautiful. I love the color. I love red anyways. I know a lot of people don't, but I do. One of my favorite colors. Just so bright and vibrant. Look at this sector here. I love that sculpture. Oh, that's interesting right there. I love this plant. So I looked it up and it said it was a father eye garden eye. I think that's what it is. Maybe I'm totally mispronouncing that. Oh God, so pretty. Look at that as well. Just so many pretty things also the maple. So I looked up the flowering quince and it says once established it can grow from zones four to nine, ten-ish and that's in my zone. It's also drought resistance once established. So I might actually plant one of those back home. Well this is very interesting. They have a circular area here and there's a maze in the middle. I you know what, I used to know what the name of that is, but I can't, it doesn't come to mind now. And it's completely planted with irises all the way around, different kind of varieties. But obviously they're not blooming right now. That's it, Jeff got it, labyrinth. While Jeff walks the labyrinth, I'm gonna walk the outer edge. There's a yew, Japanese maple. This is pretty cool. The gardens are a lot bigger than I thought they were. Oh, there it is. Here's some information on the labyrinth. Oh, look at that magnolia. Is that a magnolia? Oh my God, look at this magnolia with the yellow flowers. I've seen pink and white. You don't see it's mini pink. But yeah, never seen a magnolia with yellow flowers. Oh my God, this is beautiful. And then, let's see, uh, here's, here's what it is. A yellow bird hybrid cucumber tree magnolia. Wow, I'll have to remember that. I like how they did this grouping of pots here. I think that's sage. Maybe, either lamb's ear, either lamb's ear prop. Well, kind of looks like sage. Look at this beautiful red tulip. This is nicely done through here with the Japanese maple. They have the blue star juniper, a rose bush here. Which one is this? I think it's knockout, rainbow knockout roses. Obviously not in bloom. And what is that? Blood good Japanese maple. Oh, that's what the maple was. I think there's more hostas coming up. Oh, wow. There's an encore azalea right there. Look at that. That is a beautiful tulip. Holy moly. It's a huge flower. They have this huge pavilion here, I guess, for gatherings. And they do collect rainwater off of the roof. Wow. Okay, this side of the garden is definitely much prettier. 
or it's in season, I should say. Not much prettier. I don't know what it looks like in the summer over there. Oh, wow, look at this pink colored dogwood. The dogwoods are just white. That's absolutely beautiful. That's a beautiful yellow tulip there. And they do have a children's garden here as well. I always did like these little libraries. It's right next to the children's garden. Take a book, leave a book. Very nice. Oh, it's kind of leaning, so. Okay, stay. Oh, this is a nice shaded garden. It doesn't look like there's a lot growing other than the trees. Oh, and a pink magnolia over here. Yay, I'm glad we got to see this. Oh, those flowers are huge. Look at that. Beautiful tree. They are messy though, in my opinion. Those are cute little lilies. I think we have a viburnum back there. Another ligustrum. Japanese maple. Yeah, this is a beautiful shade garden. It's the dwarf blue saguaro false cypress. And it's actually looking way better than the other one. Probably because it has shelter and trees growing over it. Uh, I like how they've hedged this yew. Tennessee One Ton Show. The burning bush? I don't see a burning bush unless... No, that, I don't see a burning bush. Anyways, I wonder if that thing weighs one ton. That's what they're talking about. Got some mondo grass here. Got some crepe myrtles here. I bet that's beautiful when those bloom. We're just going to take a walk along the edge of the park just to get the dogs a walk in and see what's going out there because remember that's where we found that huge hydrangea. They have a very gold Scots pine. And look, what an interesting sculpture. A hydrangea. Ooh, what is that? Yeah, look at this weeping tree here. Look at the leaves. What does it say it is? Katsuratsu. Weeping Katsuratsu. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if we could grow that back at home. <laughs> Makes a lovely shade area, like Jeff was saying. They have the rose glow, Japanese barberry, weeping white pine. Ooh, that's pretty. I like that. You. Another Japanese maple. Oh, the edge is just as nice. This is the blue shag white pine. This one here is the Electra Deodor Cedar. This looks more like what I have. It's got that um, kind of light blue look, or that um, grayish silvery pine needles. That thing is massive, but I think it would do in the spot that I have it in now. Maybe if I just limb it up and take care of it. Oh, I love this, the Fortune's Japanese Cedar. That is very interesting. I love how that looks. Isn't that beautiful? Little pine cones. Okay, we're just gonna take a walk along the edge now. There's the backside of the children's garden. Do definitely have a lot of evergreens and some Red buds mixed in. Well, that's an interesting one there. Looks like an umbrella. Some barberries, Japanese maple. Yes, very Japanese esque. Bless you. Well, I like this sector here. They got a red bud, low growing juniper, and some daffodils with the little yellow throats. 
Oh, here's another one. I don't think this is the one I was at. Wow, that is huge and amazing. Come on, Kellogg. Kellogg, get from under there, come on. Crazy. Oh, I see the other hydrangea that we saw earlier. So many beautiful evergreens. Oh, there's the hydrangea we saw earlier. Oh, it seems like they have another one far down. Oh, and a low growing juniper underneath the hydrangea. Oh, that's that one pine right there. They have another pink magnolia. Looks like it's about done. Sector still looks like it's sleeping. Oh, that's a, I think what I have back at home, the Japanese barberry. I didn't know it got that large. Huh. Definitely gonna have to move some plants before they get established. I'm not sure if this is a weeping willow, but it has that umbrella shape there. It's definitely not leafed out. Oh, it's starting to. Yeah, see? Teeny tiny leaves. Oh, I love this pine. Look at it has a, the ends are golden. Look at the cute pine cones, small pine cones. Oh, I think there's a river down here. That's a nice magnolia. No flowers, it's probably just the white flower. Oh yeah, there's some kind of waterway here. Um, maybe the Tennessee River, not sure. I doubt it though. They're experimenting with the stuff you can grow on, on roofs. Jeff was just telling me that here they have an experimental garden. They're trying to test and see what they can grow on roofs. I'd imagine you could probably grow a lot yeah. on roofs. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, a nice slow flowing river. Oh, look y'all, the gray heron. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> awesome. Such beautiful birds. Kind of remind me of pterodactyls though. Wow, I just noticed they have another greenhouse. That is huge. That one is the central greenhouse. I think they actually have more as well down there. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the tour here at the University of Tennessee and got some inspiration. I know I have. Hopefully we'll see you next time here on Garden Days. Until then, bye for now.